Welcome to today's Mobile Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. Now, if you have an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod Touch, tonight you're going to learn how you can always have your family tree at your fingertips. Roots Magic lets you carry your genealogy on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch wherever you go. And this viewer is designed as a companion product to Roots Magic, our award-winning desktop genealogy software, which makes re researching, organizing, and sharing your family history easy. First of all, some word about getting help using the app. We have several different resources available to you. First, we have a website, which we've put up at www.rootsmagic.com slash iOS. And if you look at it, it has some helpful information about the app. Here's a link that you can click on, which takes you to the App Store where you can download it. And there's also a support button right here. If you click on support, you have different options. One is the frequently asked questions, and the second is the message board. Frequently Asked Questions has just a bunch of questions and answers on how to get started, how to copy data to your device, um, you know, just different things which users uh, have asked us most frequently. And then finally, the message board, if you click on that, this will take you to our forums, okay, where we have uh, message board where you can type in questions that other people can see. Uh, you can give us suggestions, give us feedback, and we and other users can answer your questions. Okay? So that is how you can get help and support for using our app. Now, a word about the actual data files that you use in our app. Now, Roots Magic on uh, your iDevice works with any Roots Magic 4, 5, or 6 file. That is any file that ends with the extension .rmgc. And the great thing about our mobile app is that there is no special conversion required. You can take your Roots Magic database just as it is on your computer and put it directly onto your onto your iPod, to your iPhone, your iPad, uh, without uh, having to do any conversion to or from any special formats. Now, our app cannot directly read a Roots Magic backup file, so any backups that you've made, those are files that end in RMBK. You just need to open those in Roots Magic and restore the backup into a full Roots Magic file that's RMGC. And one uh, nice benefit of this is that once the file is on your device, you no longer need an internet uh, connection. Okay, it's completely self-contained. It's right there on your device. So even if you have a, a device that doesn't have internet connectivity, um, and you're you're out, say at a at a in a cemetery without any Wi-Fi access, and you have an iPad. Without, uh, without the 4G, or if you have an iPod Touch that only uses Wi-Fi, well, you can still have all of your genealogy data there with you. Now, if you use any other genealogy programs, you can actually use Roots Magic or our free program, Roots Magic Essentials, to convert the files from these other genealogy programs into a Roots Magic file that the app can use. And Roots Magic can directly convert a Family Origins file, Family Tree Maker up through version 2006, a Legacy Family Tree file, or a Personal Ancestral file, that's PAF, and any other programs if you use them, uh, you need to use that program to save your data out to a GEDCOM file. The GEDCOM file will go into Roots Magic and create a full Roots Magic file that can be used with the app. To do that, I just here's Roots Magic running. All you have to do is click on the new database button, give it a file name. So this is my um, converted data, 
and then you just say I want to import information from another program click OK and then it will ask you which program does the file come from and I have a path file I have a path file right here so it's very easy to convert data if you use a different genealogy program into a Roots Magic file that you can then use with our free Roots Magic app. Okay, so let's look at how we actually install the app onto our device. Let's start with the iPhone. What you want to do is open up your iPhone to the home screen, then you just tap on the App Store icon. It's the little blue square with A. Now that will come up and you want to click down below on the search button okay and then up at the top just clear that out and you want to search for roots magic just type in roots magic then uh, just click on the first item there that says roots magic <clears throat> and you should see the roots magic app come up like this just tap on the install button and Roots Magic is completely free okay it's a free app so there won't be any bill to your iTunes account for it and we can see it loading and once it's loaded we can press uh, just tap the open button and the app will come up now the iPad will be very similar. All you need to do is start up your iPad, go to the home screen, tap on the App Store icon, and then in the upper right hand corner you'll see a search box. Click in that, or sorry, tap in that, and type in Roots Magic, and there it is. This is a universal app meaning that's designed for both the iPhone and iPod touch as well as an iPad form factor. Okay, it loads there. And once we have it open, we can just click or tap open and up starts the app. Okay, and we're ready to begin. And that is how you install the app onto your device. How do you actually copy your Roots Magic files onto your device? Well, we have two options. The first one is to use iTunes, or and the second one is to use Dropbox. Now, iTunes is the free software. If you use an iPod or iPad or iPhone, you probably have iTunes installed on your desktop computer. It's the software that you use to uh, basically communicate between your desktop computer and um, and your iDevice. Okay. Uh, now to use iTunes, let me go ahead and bring up iTunes. This happens to be iTunes version 11. This is the version which came out in late 2012. Some people may still have a previous version of iTunes, which looks a little bit different. They changed the interface in, in iTunes 11. Um, so the steps that you follow on iTunes 9 or 10 will be a little bit different than this, but for the most part, it's the same. Okay, when you start up iTunes, up at the top, you'll see your library of songs, albums, and so on, your music, movies. And when you plug in your iPhone or your, or your iPad, you connect it to your computer, you will see it listed up here in this little toolbar. So you see it says iPhone. I'm going to click on iPhone. And it now brings up a list of everything about my uh, my phone. Now up here under phone I've got some other options, summary info, apps, tones, music, movies, and so on. Go ahead and click on apps. This will show you all the apps that you have available, apps that are installed on your phone, and you have to scroll down past the actual list of apps until you get to 
what's called file sharing. Okay, and this is a list of apps that uh, can transfer documents between your iPhone and the computer. Okay, and if we scroll down here, you'll see that Roots Magic will be in that list. So all you have to do is click on Roots Magic, and then up here, it'll say Roots Magic Documents. And right now, it's empty. There are no documents. So I go down here and I click Add. And this is going to give me a chance to choose Roots Magic documents from my computer and transfer them directly onto my phone using iTunes. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the folder where I keep my Roots Magic files. And here I've got this James Smith rmgc so I'm going to click on that and click open and you'll see that now under roots magic documents I have James Smith rmgc listed it's 1.6 megabytes and just for good measure I'll just click on this sync button okay and now the sync is done and the file has been transferred onto my iPhone or iDevice. So I just go ahead, just click done and close that up and I can shut down iTunes. Now there's another way to transfer the data to your device and that is using Dropbox. And this is actually quite a bit uh, easier and faster, more automated than using iTunes, but you have to use the free Dropbox service in order uh, for it to work. If you aren't familiar with Dropbox, um, there are many articles on using it, even uh, with regards to genealogy. Uh, you can learn more about it at www.dropbox.com. But in the meantime, I have Dropbox installed on my desktop computer. Now I'm going to go on my iPad and uh, when I start up Roots Magic on my iPad for the first time, uh, I'm going to select Dropbox up at the top. Just tap Dropbox. And it says that I need to link this Roots Magic app to my Dropbox account. And it's going to take me to Dropbox to actually do this. So. Uh, I go right here to Dropbox and it says Drop Roots Magic wants to access a folder in your Dropbox. Do I allow it or not? Go ahead and click allow. Now, what this has done is in my Dropbox, it's created a folder called apps and then folder inside of that called Roots Magic. Let me go ahead and switch over to my desktop computer. Now if I click on my Dropbox I'll see there's a folder here called Apps and inside Apps there's a folder called Roots Magic. Right now it's completely empty except for this little placeholder file, this .dropbox. So what I'm going to do, I now need to on my computer copy the my Roots Magic files from my um, Roots Magic data folder to that folder on uh, and Dropbox. So all I have to do is go up here to Booth Family and I'm going to hold down the control key and also choose James Smith.rmgc and also my converted data. I'm going to go up to Edit and then Copy. Now I'm going to go to Dropbox, go to Apps, and then Roots Magic. Now that I'm in here, I'll go to Edit then paste and this just copies my files from my Roots Magic data folder to this Dropbox folder. Okay, pretty easy. And once they are in this Dropbox folder on my computer, and if my computer is connected to the internet, they will be accessible on my iPad. And I'll be able to copy them down as long as my, my uh, iPad or iDevice is connected to the internet. Um, one possibility that you could do is you could set up this Dropbox Apps Roots Magic folder as the default folder where you keep your Roots Magic data files, and that way, anytime you do make a change, it'll automatically be reflected. But that's not required. Um, but it does save you a couple steps to do it that way. Now let's go on, back on over to the iPad. Now that it's ready, we'll just click close. 
and I just I just tapped that refresh button, the little circle arrow in the upper right hand corner, and it says choose a database. And the three files that I just put into my Dropbox folder are now there. Okay, so I've got Booth Family, James Smith, and my converted data. So let's actually dive right in now and look at our files. So let's look at James Smith. Okay, I click on James Smith and what it needs to do now is download the file from Dropbox. It downloaded it onto my iPad. So now I need it to be connected to the internet in order to download it from Dropbox. But now that it's on my device, I no longer need an internet connection. So it's uh, now open. I click OK and I can look at the main screen. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is it does resemble the actual Roots Magic desktop app in many ways. You have the main views there. We have pedigree, or I can tap family, or descendants, which will show me all the descendants of the person, or even individual, which will show me all the individual information about a person, including um, the facts and events, spouses, children, parents, siblings, and so on. So let me just tap on pedigree, take me back there. So uh, we've got the pedigree view, and you'll see that even the color coding, if you use color coding in Roots Magic, those colors translate over into the app. Now on the left, you'll see this list where it says surnames. I can search for the name or search by record number. So if I search by the name, I can type in a given name or surname. If uh, I want to look for um, James Smith, and this could be the birth name or the married name, and click OK, and it narrows down that list to just the James Smiths. Okay, uh, I can click back, and you'll see that we, we've made a slight change here from um, our desktop app because here we've broken down the, the list of people by surname then by given name. So on this list you see these are all the surnames in my file. Next to each surname is a little number and that tells me how many people with that surname I have. So I can see I have 30 Joneses. I can scroll down here. Um, down to Smith's and so on. Also, uh, you've got the A through W, the little um, quick jump. So you can just slide, tap on a letter, and it'll take you right there to it. So I want to look at the Smith's, and then I click on the Smith's, and it shows me all the Smith's so now sorted by given name. And so I can look at Nathaniel James Smith. Just tap on him, and his information comes up. If I actually tap on Nathaniel James Smith himself, a little pop-up comes up with which gives me more information about him. Uh, it'll shows me the birth, the death date. I can also tap on parents and, and jump to any of his parents. I can tap on spouses and jump to a spouse. Or um, someone higher up the pedigree, I can tap on them and then tap on set primary and it'll move that person into the primary uh, position and I can just tap on these um, arrows to jump down I can tap on Dr. James Smith tap on view full details and it gives me all of his information here now uh, in terms of the facts, if I want to look at the general note media and sources for James Smith, I tap right here on the first line and it gives me all of his notes right here. Up at the top, it shows me the number of sources and media that I have. So I can tap on sources. I don't have any just for James Smith at this time. And I can tap on media and this will show me any pictures and media that I have tied to James Smith. One question that we're often asked is do the pictures get any bigger and uh, at this time no. 
And that's because Roots Magic stores a thumbnail version of all your pictures in the actual Roots Magic database file while keeping your the full size images separate wherever you wherever you keep them originally. And so um, that's something which we may have some ideas that we could do in the future that would allow you to have the full size pictures accessible in the app but at this time you're just looking at the thumbnails okay um, so that is the main uh, view down at the bottom you've got files views lists and tools we've looked at everything under views let's look under lists this allows us to look at all the different um, lists of, of different items in our file. We have sources up at the top. I can tap on to do items. I don't have any to do items. Research logs, uh, media, so I can look at all the media in my file. <coughs> Addresses, so if I keep my address book here. Repositories, correspondences, and places so I can click on a place just tap on a place and it gives me uh, more information about that place now the last view down at the bottom past list is tools and there's first a perpetual calendar that you can type in any date um, So if we want to look at July 1776, there we go. We can look it up and see what day everything was on. There's also a date calculator where you can give it a start date, an end date, or an age. You have to give it two of the three, and then it will calculate the third one for you. And this is very similar to the date calculator that's in the Roots Magic desktop version. There's also a relationship calculator. So you can choose any two people in your file. So if you want to look at Dr. James Smith, as well as uh, Reuben Smith, and we can calculate the relationship, and it says that the relationship um, that Dr. James Smith is the great-grandnephew of Reuben D. Smith, and it even gives us the name of their common ancestors, James Smith and Betsy Elizabeth Mead. And then the last calculator is the Soundex calculator, where you can just give it a say a surname Smith calculate and it'll give you the sound X codes for him simple little calculator but it's useful uh, for some genealogical applications okay so that is the iPad okay now let's take a look at the iPhone and iPod touch okay remember on my iPhone, I used iTunes to get the data file onto the device. Okay, um, so I don't have to go through the Dropbox stuff. Uh, but I bring it up and I immediately see on the device it says James Smith. So it has my file right there. I tap on it. Opens it up. <clears throat> and you'll see I now have the pedigree view right here. Now of course the screen is much smaller than the iPad so it can't show as much information as you can on the iPad. To navigate to the different views on the iPad you had had the little buttons along the top. Here you actually have to tap on views down at the bottom and a little menu pops up and you have pedigree, family, descendants, and individual. So you just tap on those to switch between the different views. Now to browse the list of people and to search for names, you tap on the little button in the upper left hand corner. So it brings up the surname list, very similar to the iPad. Go here, go to Smiths, and uh, now it shows me all the Smiths in my file. Just tap on it. If you tap on a name, it brings up the same pop-up that we saw on the iPad <clears throat> where we can see the parents, the spouses, 
set that per person as the primary person at view or tap on view details and it shows us their information with all parents siblings spouses facts and events tap on the fact oh sorry that one didn't have any information let's go to James here we go so uh, if we want to look at uh, information for his birth see we have that little right arrow there so that means we have actually more information about his birth there so I tap on that and it brings up the notes for his birth right there up at the top I've got the sources and media I can tap on sources view the source information and the media is also there Okay, and then if you tap on lists on the bottom you have access to all the same lists places research logs so on and tools you have the same date calculator relationship calculator soundex calculator and perpetual calendar are all right there and that is the iPhone iPod touch app now what about future enhancements Please keep in mind that this is version one of the app. Okay, this is our first step into the mobile world. Okay, so we're still kind of learning um, how our users want to use this, the types of things that they're going to want to do. And so we ask that if you have any feedback, please give us that feedback via the message board that I showed you earlier. We want to know how you're using the app. What kind of things are you doing with it? We also want to know what types of things do you want to do that you can't do right now with the app. And definitely this app will evolve from your feedback. And also one of the most common questions that we've been asked since we re released this is, are you working on a version for Android? Yes. Uh, the Android version of our app is under development right now and it will be ready in the near future okay so uh, stay tuned for that but thank you for joining us this evening we hope uh, you've learned a bit answered some of your questions on how to use the app how to get your data onto it uh, again we'd sure love to hear your feedback there via message boards and uh, thank you very much and have a great evening